Carrie yeah. hates ladybugs, so... You may not want to put that online. Why? What is PETA? PETA is not going to give a <laughs> sh about a ladybug. We're helping it see. Hajime! California for a week, I was in Des Moines for a week for the Drake Relays, and I'll talk about that in the next vlog, and I got even more exciting news coming up that I'm going to be competing in the very first American Track League meet. That'll be awesome! In that very first vlog I ever made, pull out vlog number one, I said something like, I don't exactly know where these vlogs are going to go and what they're going to evolve into, and where they're going to take me. And that's kind of true for my whole pole vault career too. I've just kind of jumped on the wave and enjoyed the ride so far. And I just want to add to that, I never knew who I would meet along the way. And I have met all sorts of incredible people. So that starts the story of how Mount Sac came to play. Bubba Sparks heard that I was going to be jumping into Mount Sac relays. And I love Mount Sac. I've jumped there since my freshman year of college on every pit and every meet and I've kind of worked my way up through the ranks until competing at the elite meet. Bubba sent me a message on Facebook saying, Hey, why not come out a week early? And if you come out that week early, you know, we can talk pole vault for a week and you can just stay at my place. You don't have to get a hotel or anything. I never met Bubba face to face. We've been talking for about a year maybe through like social media and Facebook and text messages and emails and things like that so with that in mind I said yeah why not I'd love to go stay at your place <laughs> so I did I have to get this out of the way I walk into their place and it had the most amazing view I have ever seen in my entire life and that whole first day I was a little overwhelmed and out of my comfort zone and I was afraid to touch anything <laughs> just kind of, after that first day it just felt like a friend that I've had for a long time. That's the pole vault community. There's nothing quite like it. It was awesome. And we're going to keep talking about it. Here we go. On Sunday, I contacted Brian Yokoyama, who's the chair of the pole vault developmental stuff um, with USATF. So I show up to Mount Sac, and they said I could jump with them. Got to Mount Sac. I'm a little early. Doors aren't even opened yet to get a little practice in. Brian's there playing with like a remote control car. Geo grabs it all of a sudden and he starts zipping it around. And I guess they were talking about how can we turn this into an event? How can we fly this car off of a jump into the sand pit and then have long jumpers jump against the cart? They're trying to find all this fun stuff to do at track meets. And it was just laid back and fun and awesome. Brian at one point comes up to me and he just goes, That thing can run a 10 3, 100 meter dash. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> I wish I had a little racer car that ran that fast. So I started jumping. I had to take like 30 jumps from four lefts and six lefts. The pole vault's kind of funny, you know, because uh, it's like politics. You know, everyone has an opinion. Everyone else is wrong according to your opinion. You know, it's like religion and politics. You really can't talk about it. And nobody's right. There's no one way to do it. Brian's one of those good coaches. Same with Gio, who just didn't say anything for the first couple jumps until I kept looking at them and they're like, hey, can we suggest a couple things? I was like, yeah, go for it. Brian started suggesting, as I come through the pole, try and do like a cartwheel on top of it, which will create that turn. And I did it and my vault changed within one jump. And then Geo suggested, hey, you know, it looks like your plant's getting in front of you a little bit, which is what I've been talking about for a while and I just didn't really notice it. And he's like, just push it straight up to that left hand and just feel it just suck you in. And I was like, all right, I'll just over -cue it. First jump, boom, everything starts changing again. It was so good to just oh, have nice jump. two new cues already nice jump. to start That's working on. Awesome. So we were trying to figure out why me and Caroline and Steve were like, why is the bend so low? What's going on? We did this and the bend started going up where it was supposed to go again. And those little poles got even littler and those big poles got little. Oh, 
It's another good one. I got done and I was like, I have all these new cues to work on and I can't wait to bring them back to Minnesota. It was a good vault session and that was Sunday already. I wasn't even a full 24 hours in yet. And it was already worth it. <laughs> The next day, I had an acceleration workout, and I don't usually jump on Sunday, so I didn't know how it feel exactly. I have no idea, I just said I was pumped to be in a new place. And finally, get some sun, touching my body. Never worked out in a driveway before. This will be fun. And I've never lifted weights outside, let alone in a parking lot, so that was fantastic. Fantastic, and I wish I could do that again, but there's snow in Minnesota, which whatever He took me to Dana Hills High School, and I got my acceleration workout in over there Dana Hills track and field let me work out with them today It's pretty awesome. I even PR'd in uh, hurdle hops did 39s five Five times five at the height of 39. I think I could have done 42 there's Some magic on this track. I'm telling you it's pretty sweet. I was having fun. So yeah, it's over and done. Excel day is done. Vaulted yesterday. And recovery day tomorrow. Probably on the beach. Whoop, whoop. So that was Monday. On to Tuesday. I had a recovery workout and I just thought I'm not going to try and do it in the garage and I don't think I wanted to go get stuck in the gym. So I went to the ocean and the beach and I was like, I'll just run along the ocean and do some recovery circuits on the grass or in the sand or something. And Nancy was like, yeah, well, and then when you come back, or, and I'll have lunch made for you. So I'm out there, and I don't, there's something about the ocean. There's like some kind of energy about it or something that I lost all track of time. And before I knew it, like three hours passed. Maybe it's a negative ion! Felt re-energized just sitting by it. And only people by the ocean will really know what I'm talking about. Negative ion, bitches. <laughs> Maybe it's a negative ion! So that night, Nancy wanted to take me out and show me, um, I forgot exactly what it's called, like a pier area. There's like a huge pirate ship in the bay, <laughs> and kids get to play on it all the time. They're all yelling at them like, Oh, you know, you gotta get up there and get to the boxes and throw them over there. What are you doing, you squag? But Nancy kept saying, I just can't believe how beautiful it is out here, and we are so lucky to be here. She was counting her blessings. It's infectious. If you're around... A good environment where people are counting their blessings and looking at the good things they have in their life instead of complaining about all the crap that's going on all the time. It makes you do the same thing. At the same time, I'm reading this book. It's called The Biology of Belief and it's talking about how cells react more by their environment than by a different stimuli. Long story short, the whole book talks about your thoughts can affect the way your cells react. So there's the science stuff that I'm always looking for. And that your environment is more important than your DNA technically so it's kind of like that nature versus nurture thing and I've, I've always been a nature kind of person but now I'm kind of going a little more towards the nurture part of it after reading this book it was just a good environment that I was in and that first day where I felt out of my comfort zone I just their energy and vibe and a combination of where I was and um, how they were looking at things made me look at things that way too I keep thinking back to that 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 can happen all the time that people's energies are contagious. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but Bubba Sparks and Nancy Sparks are awesome. That's what I'm trying to say, and that they're good people, and you should surround yourself with people like that because you feel good about yourself, that you can tackle and conquer the world. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to conquer the world. That's what I'm going to do. So if you guys are following me on social media and things like that, uh, I tell people where I'm going and what I'm doing. Things like that. Tim Werner contacted me through Facebook and was like, Hey, Sean, I have a boat at Dana Point. Would you like to go try and find some whales? Because everyone bailed on me. Yep, I would love to go see some whales. Or just chill out on your boat, because that sounds fun, too. Going whale watching with Tim Werner. Hey, Sean. Your Bill. Oh, hey, it's nice to meet you. I'm Pleasure. Sean. Pleasure, Sean. Uh, Making the vlog, huh, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> I got an honorary hat. I'll wear it. I'll be a good sport. <laughs> <laughs> we get out there about five minutes in. There are, like, 40 dolphins chasing his boat. I've only seen them in zoos! And he's like, all right, here's the trick. We find the big flocks of birds, because you know, they're eating the leftovers of these dolphins, and these dolphins are like schooling these huge um, schools of fish into balls, and then they're just picking them all up, eating them all up, yum, 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 yum. 
And he's like, so we saw like a flock of birds and we fly over there and there's dolphins jumping and swimming and flipping out and doing dolphin-y flippity-doos all over the place. And I was just freaking, <laughs> I don't know where to film. I don't know what to look at. This is so freaking awesome. I have no idea what to do. You know, they finished one school and Tim's like, there's more birds. Let's go over there. So we went over there. And the whole time I'm just filming everything in awe of what's going on. Tim yells at me to go on the bow of the boat. I think it's the bow of the front of the boat. I'm not a, I'm not a pirate. I don't know, I don't know where, what side's which. Point of the boat that Leonardo DiCaprio was on in Titanic. That side of the boat. So I ran to that side of the boat and stuck my GoPro over the lens, or over the edge. And you could see the dolphins swimming around and jumping up and down. And, and it was just amazing because the closer I got to the water, you could see these dolphins swimming back and forth. And then they'd kind of turn sideways and they'd see the red light flashing and they would jump up and tap the camera. I was playing with a dolphin via GoPro. <laughs> what? So that was cool. And then even at one point, I stuck the GoPro under the water while the boat was moving, thinking, ah, we'll see if we can even see anything. And I stuck it in there and, and I was like, Psh, this footage sucks. And I'm gonna lose my GoPro at the bottom of this ocean, so I better stop doing it. And then I get home and I look at the footage and it was the coolest footage I've ever seen. You could see so clear with this GoPro Hero 3. It is the best camera in the entire planet. I didn't even try. I didn't even know what would happen, but it worked so good and I was just jacked. I'm still jacked. It was just cool. I don't know. I'm so excited. I got to see a dolphin. So I get back and Tim drops me off and throws me an Advantage Athletic shirt. I wore it for my next workout. I was so jacked and kind of like I was talking about about the environment and the people you're around. Um, Tim's just an awesome dude and with very cool energy and just loves what he does and loves life and it again it was contagious. I went and lifted right after that back at Bubba Sparks' house and was PRing and everything. <laughs> that just felt so good. So that was going to be the end of staying with Bubba Sparks. The rest of the week I was going to be in a hotel and I told him I was going to go pick up Riley because if you remember Riley, Dalzell from the last couple of vlogs, um, he was doing Mount Sack too. Sean, if you want to stay another couple days, you can. You know, just bring Riley. We have space for him. Riley, do you want to stay with Bubba Sparks? It's right by Laguna Beach. It's Dana Point. Yep, I do. <laughs> Riley came over and dropped off his stuff, said hi, and then Bubba took us over to the track and we got our workout in for the day. Dana Hills High School. Go Dolphins! <laughs> Thank you for letting us use your facilities. <laughs> so that next day, me and Riley had a, a shakeout. I was like, Riley, I had really fun at the ocean, man. Ocean? What do you do at the ocean? What's, what's that? We went exploring, found all these cool things, started sticking the GoPros in holes and in little water crevices, and just started filming everything. I fell in. My shoes are soaked. Oh. oh yeah. Then we're like, well, we gotta go in there, and everyone's no one's in the water because they're from California and 60 degrees is too cold. But for us, we're like 60 degrees. Let's do this, because when do we get to go in the ocean again? But we had to do it after we got our little workout in, which is just a couple of sand beach plyos. So we start jumping on the ocean, or jumping on the sand up this huge hill when we're filming it, and then everyone starts freaking out and pointing in the water. And Riley goes, I think I just saw a whale. No way, man. They're not this close to the shore. And then... <laughs> whale juice squirts straight out the top of his head. It's not really whale juice. It's probably just air. A whale juice, because it sounds disgusting. <laughs> the whale juice starts squirting out of the, the top of his head. And I'm not even joking. We are 40 meters away from five whales. It blew my mind, because Tim, after the dolphins, was like, I'm sorry, Sean, you only got to see dolphins. We didn't get to see any whales. And we got to see dolphins by accident while we were swimming in the water they were in, which... What? I didn't know what to say about that. So we were running around like little schoolgirls. Oh, the water's cold! Oh! <gasps> so we'd get in and get ready to be taken out by a wave, and we'd be sitting there, and then all of a sudden... Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Nope! Whoa! Water is cold! Out of me. 
We ended up finally getting in. Here's the idea we had. We thought, Brian, it'd be funny if we could sit in the sand, hold the GoPro in front of us, and let a wave just crash in the back of our head. So I'm sitting there like, Yeah, this is gonna be fun. And Riley turns around, and then he looks back, and his space is just flipping out. And the wave just smashes into us, and it pushed us uphill at a pretty steep angle on our butts for like four or five feet. Just imagine the worst place to get sand, and that's where we got sand. <laughs> it's, I still have sand there, and it's been over a week. So that was our shakeout. <laughs> so then we get to the meet. Coach and Jav. Yeah. Yeah, um, Javelin. Thanks. Kylie Hudson, what's up? Good luck today. Thanks. My whole intention that whole meet was just to work on some of those cues I was working on with Brian and Gio, and then Bubba Sparks gave me a new cue about squeezing my left hand as hard as I can while pushing it up, because it will keep your hips back farther and keep your chest forward so you can really swing into it when the pole's ready to take you. And I warmed up with that cue. And trying to do some of the other ones, so that's three new cues, and it's hard to change all those at one time. And warm-ups were going great. All those poles were getting small again. I was like, wow, this is going to be one hell of a day. And so I came in at 535, which is 17.6. I kind of did that first cue a little bit. All I could think about was squeezing the pole and pushing it up high. And boom, just smoked it on my first attempt. And then the bar went to 550. And I started getting uh, a couple little headwinds. And it was my first outdoor meet and I kind of forgot what to do with any kind of wind whatsoever because I've been indoors since October. So the first two jumps I just kind of failed <laughs> as a pole vaulter. And then the last one was like, oh yeah, headwind. You just kind of keep hammering through it or move up three to six inches. So I did that. And I put a pretty good attempt on my last one. But that was the meet. But um. Yeah, I left just like still jacked that, wow, these cues are going to work and I just need a couple practices without a meet to kind of hammer on them and get them rolling. And that's how I left. I looked at it like a giant positive and it was a good opener for my outdoor season. So that was it. So the last thing I'll tell you to do is you know, subscribe, share, like, follow me on all those social media things, Sean Danger, Hoot. The last thing I kind of want to say, and I've been meaning to say this for a while, is everyone, I always get this in an email or some kind of social media somewhere, is how am I so positive all the time? And the thing is, is... I haven't always been. I, it takes a lot of practice. And if you follow me on Instagram, all of those of the days is part of the practice. At the end of every day, you guys should do this too. Just hashtag of the day, find a quote that kind of matched your day. And because you can always change the way you're thinking about stuff. So you can look at it like, all right, I know I did. Or you can look at it like, why did I know I I had such an awesome day, I was running so fast. Both are correct answers, you know. Possibly, you know, depending on your situation. You have a choice of how you want to look at it. And my choice has always been for the past three years or two years now, is to always choose the positive side because the negative one doesn't help you at all. And so that was my trick. I was like, every day for a year I want to do this. I want to find a positive quote and like a funny picture or like a cool picture that I found that day that just kind of matches how my mood or feel, feeling was. Here's my challenge to you. You guys do the same thing. I want you to hashtag of the day, find a quote, find a picture, and then put hashtag Team Hoot on it. And then we can all kind of help each other stay positive and find the positives in everything. Instagram and or Twitter. Drake Relay's Mall Vault will be next. Okay, bye. The worst thing about me vaulting is I am terrible at jumping in headwinds. I drove all, all this negative... Negativity crap jumped into my head like, why did you drive all this way to jump into a headwind? What the heck? It sucks, Bob. After two attempts where I swung every jump up, but they were ugly attempts, on my third one was just like, Screw it! I'm gonna break this pole. I don't even care if I blow through it. Hit as hard as I could, built the headwind, and I just fought it, and then swung up and popped over 520. Uh, I don't have any video because I was the only one there. No dad or coaches or anything. I was bummed out at myself that I jumped 520 and all that negative crap in my head was coming back. Negative ions, bitches.